All right, so let's uh, let's dive into something that I'm sure you've all been thinking about a lot. Mm -hmm. How to make your book a bestseller. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into that, but today we're going deep on book titles. Okay. We're not just talking about what sounds good, right. but what actually sells. We are going to be cracking the code of irresistible book titles today. Ooh, I like that. Using a chapter from How to Craft Irresistible Book Titles yeah. by Dr. I.D. as our guide. Perfect. This chapter is all about keywords. Okay. And it really pushes back on some of that basic advice that's floating around out there. Oh, really? You know, the whole find keywords with low competition so you can rank higher. Right, right. Well, the there's a lot more to the story. So low competition doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be rolling in it? Exactly. Yeah. Low competition does not necessarily translate to dollar signs in your bank account. Okay. Dr. ID even talks about how authors can get caught up in this eureka moment uh -huh. when they find a keyword that seems perfect. Right. Low competition describes their book perfectly. Yeah. But then crickets. It's like finding a beautiful secluded beach, yes. but realizing there's no one there to sell your awesome seashell necklaces to. Exactly. So how do we avoid that deserted beach scenario? Yeah. How do we make sure people are there? By digging deeper, into something called keyword performance. Okay. And the real metric we need to be looking at, uh, average monthly earnings for books already using that keyword. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Yes. The source gives the example of devotional for teen girls. Okay. Now that keyword has a ton of competition. Right. A score of 100. Wow. Meaning tons of books are using it. Uh -huh. But, and here's the kicker. Okay. It also has high average monthly earnings. Mm. Over $9,000. Yeah. So okay. even though the beach is crowded, people are still buying those seashell necklaces like crazy. What's fascinating here is that it tells us there's a huge market demand for this topic. It also suggests that high competition isn't necessarily a deal breaker if there's a big enough audience hungry for that content. So what's the takeaway? Yeah. What's the takeaway for you? Don't be scared off by keywords just because they have high competition. Right. If the earnings are there, yeah. it means that there's money to be made. Exactly. Now let's look at another example. Devotional for teen girls with anxiety. Okay. This one has moderate competition, a score of 45, mm. and still rakes in almost $8,000 a month. This one is interesting because it suggests that niching down getting a little more specific with your keywords okay. can still lead to a really healthy income. But here's where things get really juicy. Okay. The keyword devotional for teen girls journal has very low competition. Right. A score of 33. Hmm. You'd think that's a gold mine, right? <laughs> yeah, less competition, easier to stand out. Exactly. Except the average monthly earnings are shockingly low. Oh no. Only around $1,300. Wow. Which begs the question, why would a keyword with so little competition be making so little money? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. So there are a couple of reasons why we might be seeing this, this kind yeah. of discrepancy mm -hmm. between the competition and the earnings. Right. The first possibility is that there simply isn't a big market mm. for that specific keyword. Okay. Not enough people are searching for books mm -hmm. on that exact topic. So in this case, maybe not that many Teen girls are looking for a devotional exactly. with journaling prompts. And the source actually backs this up with some data. Okay. They found that devotional for teen girls journal only gets about 210 searches per month. Wow. That's not a lot. That's a pretty small pond to be fishing in. Yeah, for sure. Um, so low earnings could mean low demand. Right. What's the other scenario we need to be aware of? The flip side is that there is a market. Okay. People are searching. Uh -huh. But the books that are out there just aren't hitting the mark. Mm, it's yeah. like a restaurant with a line out the door, but the food is bland and the service is terrible. So there's potential for someone to come in and steal all those hungry customers. Exactly. With a better offering. And this is where it gets really interesting for yeah. you as an author. Okay. This is where you can spot an opportunity uh -huh. to fill a gap in the market. This is making me think yeah. about how we can tell the difference right. between a dead end and a hidden opportunity. Uh -huh. How can we figure out yeah. which scenario is more likely? The key is to look at search volume Okay. alongside those earnings numbers. All right. If you see high search volume, but low earnings, that's a big flashing sign Ooh. that there's an unmet need okay. in the market. So it's not just about 
finding a keyword with low competition. Right. It's about finding a keyword where there's a mismatch. Exactly. Between what readers want yes. and what's currently available. Precisely. And that's where good market research comes in. Okay. You need to go beyond just looking at keywords and really dig into what your target audience is looking for. Okay. What their pain points are. Uh -huh. What kind of book would truly resonate with them. It's like being a detective. I love that. Piecing together clues yeah. to figure out what the perfect book would look like for yeah. this specific audience. I love that analogy. And there are so many ways you could do this research. Oh, really, like what? Read reviews of existing books in your genre. Okay. Check out online forums and social media groups mm -hmm. where your target audience hangs out. Right. Even just talking to people who fit your reader profile. Yeah. Can give you invaluable insight. So keywords are important, but they're really just the starting point. Absolutely. The real magic happens when you combine that data yeah. with a deep understanding of your reader uh -huh. and a desire to create something truly special for them. Absolutely. And this brings us back to something the author said earlier. Okay. About keywords being like, brush strokes on the canvas of discovery. I love that metaphor. It reminds us that even though we're talking about data and analytics, right. there's still an art yeah. to crafting a book title that truly captures the essence of your book and yeah. draws readers in. It's about finding that sweet spot mm -hmm. where creativity and data-driven decision-making intersect. Right. You need both to craft a title that not only stands out, mm -hmm. but also connects with your ideal reader on an emotional level. So we've talked about looking at keyword performance, not just competition, right. and how to analyze search volume and earnings uh -huh. to uncover those hidden opportunities. Yes. But I think it's important to remember that the title is just one piece of the puzzle. Absolutely. When it comes to attracting readers. A great title can definitely grab attention, Yeah. but it's the cover of the blurb and ultimately the content of the book right. that will determine whether someone actually buys and enjoys it. It's like a first date. That's a perfect analogy. The title might get you in the door, Yes. but it's everything else that determines whether there's a second date. Exactly. Now, before we wrap up, there's one more point from the source that I wanted to highlight. Okay. Dr. ID emphasizes that even after you've done all this keyword research and analysis, right. you still need to make sure your title is catchy, memorable, uh -huh. and accurately reflects what your book is about. He's absolutely right. You don't want to mislead readers with a title that promises something your book doesn't deliver. Right. That's a recipe for bad reviews and disappointed readers. Yeah, it all comes back to understanding your reader. Exactly. And what will make them click that buy now button. And that involves thinking about the psychology of your reader. Okay. What kind of language will resonate with them? Yeah. How can you create a sense of intrigue or curiosity that makes them want to learn more? It's like you're writing a mini advertisement for your book. Exactly. Right there in the title. You've got to grab their attention. Yes. And make them want to take a bite. And just like with any good advertisement. Right. You need to know your audience. Yeah. And what will appeal to them. Right. A title that works for a cozy mystery novel might not work for a nonfiction book about personal finance. So where does that leave us? Yeah. We've learned that keyword competition is just one piece of the puzzle. Right. You need to look at earnings and search volume to really understand the market potential. Yeah. And sometimes those low competition keywords can actually be a sign of a hidden opportunity. Absolutely. If you know how to read the signs. It's all about being a good detective. I like that. We've also been reminded that data is a powerful tool, mm -hmm. but it's most effective when combined with creativity yeah. and a genuine understanding of your reader. Okay. A well-crafted title is a blend of art and science. Couldn't have said it better myself. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of irresistible book titles, I want to leave you with a little challenge. Okay. Think about a topic you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. What keywords would people use to find books on that subject? Yeah. Now start digging into the data. Look at the competition, the earnings, the search volume, uh -huh. and see what you discover. You might just unearth a hidden gem of a keyword that helps you craft the perfect title for your next bestseller. Until next time, happy writing.